Okay, hi. Um, in this video, uh, we're going to go over um, overloading in C++. So I'm going to look at operator overloading first. So um, as usual, um, I'm going to be looking at examples of code here. So uh, we'll look at binary operators and unary operators, some, some examples of those. Um, we'll especially look at the stream operators so overloading that. I think that's very useful. Um, and some other things. So um, uh, we are going to be using operator overloading on your assignment for this week for the, the, the class for these videos. So that's one reason why I want to show some examples of these. Um, oper operator overloading um, is, is a very useful kind of thing um, in any high-level programming language. So, so most programming languages nowadays have a way to do this kind of a thing. So what it allows you to do is it allows you to add a new type to the language and then to be able to define um, operators like plus, minus, um, star, you know, multiplication on your new type, okay? So this is natural. I mean, we're using a, in the example I'm using today, we're going to use a, add a new cl complex number uh, type using a class to the, to, to the language. So it's, it's, of course, natural to want to be able to add and subtract and multiply complex numbers together, right? But even for types that aren't like, like a new number, you know, uh, still operators uh, are useful. So just, just as a, a quick example, you've probably been using the string type in C++ uh, in this class. Um, the, the, the plus operator, so string is really uh, an object. It's, it's, it's kind of different than, than the, the basic built-in types like floats and integers in C++. So it was added to the language in, when C++ was created. Um, and uh, it doesn't support like all the operators, but, but like plus, for example, is defined for strings. And it, it uh, defines a concatenation operation. So if you, do, if you add two strings together, what happens is it concatenates the, the, the two strings that you give it, and the result is a new string, right? So not, not many other operators are overloaded for string, but, um, what, what, but anyway, so we'll show some examples of, of overloading operators. And then at the very end, I want to show function overloading. I'll, this, this is uh, more kind of a setup for the next video here, but, but we'll look at uh, just overloading simple functions, okay? Um, so um, if, if I didn't complete my point here on why operating overloading is useful, so this makes, when you're building a new uh, type to, you, and adding it to the language, this makes it much easier to actually use the type naturally rather than having to call member methods or, um, 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 uh, you know, or, or send messages to your objects, okay? So, so it makes being able to use new types that you add to a high-level language much more intuitive for the people that are actually going to be using your abstract data type or your new class, all right? So, anyway, let, let's get started. So, as usual, I will post this code with this video. Um, as I said, we're using a complex number type, so let, let's, let's go ahead and look at it and let's look at the, the constructors that I've got created for it. So a complex number is just, um, I mean, you can read the Wikipedia article if you've never seen these. It's, it's a number that has both a real and an imaginary part, um, so it can be used to represent, um, well, so, so it's very useful in, in different uh, areas of mathematics, right? So. Um, there's no like built-in data type for complex numbers in C or C++, um, although I believe there's some pretty uh, uh, you know, readily available uh, implementations of complex numbers in like a boost library or, or other places if you really needed it. So, but it's not, not too hard to, to make a basic abstract data type complex number of our own. Uh, so all we need is two private member variables, the real part and the imaginary part. Okay. Um, and um, I'll look at the uh, the constructor here. So by oh, and, and I've only got one constructor defined for this class, uh, and, and I'll come back then to our, our all all the operators that we've all loaded here. So oh, I forgot to fill up my header my uh, my header here. So um, so. So this is just our kind of our default constructor. Um, uh, it's our uh, I've actually it's a, a default constructor. If you don't know, is just a uh, is just a constructor that takes no parameters. So technically, this isn't a uh, our default constructor because um, 
this constructor takes two parameters, the real and the imaginary part, but we give default values for both of these, so you can actually um, uh, omit these when you construct a new complex number, and by default it'll create a complex number for you with the real and imaginary parts both um, initialized to zero, okay? So, let me save that and rebuild. And um, let's go down here to main and look at our complex number type so that built successfully. So I'll jump back down here to main. Um, and we'll go ahead and do all three of these. So now that we've created a complex number and it has a constructor, we can, um, and, and my, my constructor is kind of like a default constructor. So if you don't provide any parameters, it will default to giving the real and imaginary part as zero, but you can provide those. So if you want to create a complex number that the real part is 3.5 and the imaginary part is 2.8, you can do that. Um, you know, the real and imaginary part, either or both, can be negative. So, so since we're using uh, uh, signed doubles here, um, it works fine. So if I give a negative value for either one of these, um, it will uh, use both of those. So. So as you can see, C1 um, is uh, 0 plus 0, so it initialized both the real and the imaginary part to be 0. The, the part with the i is the imaginary part here. C2 has, is 3.5 plus 2.8i, and, um, and C3 is, is 1.8 minus 4.5i. All right? So that's just the basic. So we've created an abstract um, uh, Type, an abstract data type uh, to handle complex numbers. So let's look at operator overloading. Uh, actually, I've already used my first operator, so let me talk about that first. I've actually overloaded the output stream operator. So notice um, I'm just directly, you know, C1 is a new type that I defined and added to the language. It's a new class. But, um, uh, as you can see from these statements, I can just send it directly to my output stream as if it was like a built-in int or a float. So how do we do that? So I think most of the assignments up to this class, before we talk about operator overloading, we've defined a two-string method, and I simply would do something like this instead. And I've actually got a two-string method uh, as well for this class here. So uh, if we stopped and rebuilt, this would this would work fine. Um, uh, but, but yeah, these are basically doing the same thing. But before we did over operator overloading, we had to call a specific member function. So, so this is what operator overloading does for us. Uh, instead of having to call like member functions, like I was saying, we, we can use it more as if it's a built-in type of the language. Okay, so it makes it easier for users of your of your class to, to be able to use them. So, um, so that should work fine here. Uh, Right, so, so C1, either as we, if we use toString or we use the output um, stream operator, it does it, okay? So let, let's look at the uh, output stream operator. So, um, so down here you'll see that I've got a toString uh, method. Um, so let me look at that real quick. So um, before we come back, um, so this should be similar to implementations of toString. We've used uh, had many examples of these in previous videos. So this is just a member of my complex number function, and it returns a string as a result. So in this case, I'm using an output string stream to just stream in a representation of my complex number. So we uh, between an opening and close parentheses, we we stream the real part and we stream the, the imaginary part, I do a little bit of some things. So if the imaginary part is negative, we output it as negative that instead of plus, uh, plus a negative part, right? It just makes it look prettier. So if, if you use complex numbers in like a mathematical text, you would print these out like this instead of saying plus negative 4.5i, okay? So this if else is just handling that. And that's it. So, so we stream it out to an output string stream uh, and we return that resulting string as the result of our two string function, all right? So let's look at the um, operator. Uh, so, so notice the, the syntax for an overloaded loaded operator. If you want to define a new operator, so we're actually overloading uh, the operator by defining a new function that has this name operator less than less than for the output stream operator. Okay. Uh, now the op output stream operator. Um, so, so one disadvantage of me doing this one first is it's a little bit more complex than than basic 
binary operators or unary operators, okay? So the output stream operator, the reason why we have to do it like this as a friend function instead of a actual member function, overloaded member function of our class, is if you notice, uh, whenever you do a, a, an output stream operator like C1 here, the left hand side, like this one, let's look at this, the left hand side is a, one of the, is, is C out, so the left hand side is actually an output stream um, object, okay? And then the right hand side is like your class, so in this case it's a string, but, but we want to, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to add an operator where the left hand side is a stream, like the C out stream, but the right hand side um, is our complex number, the new class, the new, the new data type we're adding to the language here, okay? So normally uh, when we're adding operators, like a binary operator, both the left and right hand side are going to be the new class that we're adding. So like C2 in this case is both, is a complex number. So if I want to add a, a, a plus, a binary operator of plus for addition, I'm going to have a complex number on the left and the right hand side. But that doesn't work for if I want to overload my output stream. The left hand side has to be C out, has to be one of these output streams of some kind, okay? So that means that, that uh, it, instead of doing something like this as a regular member function, we have to define what's, like, uh, what's known as a friend function, okay? And uh, I won't go into too much about all of this. I mean, you have to use basically the pattern. Our textbook kind of gives us the, this. So to, to overload the output stream operator, it's going to return an, a, a reference to an output stream. So it should return a reference to an output stream. And, and it takes two parameters as input. So it takes an output stream as, as the first parameter. So that's really the left-hand side of, of, the, of the output stream operator. And it takes, uh, and this is what we're trying to add to the language. So if, if it ever sees one of these complex numbers on the right-hand side of the output stream, it's going to call our overloaded output stream operator here. So it should take a reference to a complex number on the right-hand side, OK? So uh, in my example code here, the implementation of this, if, if you get the syntax correct to, to, to define this friend function, so, so this is basically the same without the friend as we, as we had declared it in our um, complex number class declaration here. So my implementation, I'm, I'm basically just reusing my two string method. So I just, um, so, so we're passed in the output stream uh, that we're trying to send our complex number into. So all we do is we use the two string method to, to create a rep representation of our, of this complex number as a string. And then we send that to whatever output stream we're dealing with. Okay. And then we just, the, by the, the way these output stream, um, operators work, you should always return the output stream that, that you were given as input, but now we've, we've sent a representation of our string, of, of our complex number, to the output stream. So that's now in our, uh, in our out stream here, and we just return that, okay? So the result of all that, you know, and, and, and um, um, you maybe don't have to completely understand all these. I mean, it, it, you really should. I mean, it's just a function. It has a funny looking name, but it's a function with this name, operator, left arrow, left arrow. That's our stream operator. And it has two parameters. So it takes a reference to an O stream as the first parameter and it takes a reference to a complex number as the second parameter. And it returns a reference to an O stream um, as the results, right? So, and since we declared those, you know, um, if we look at the actual implementation of this function, uh, we see that, that we're passed in uh, a reference to an O stream, and we use that to, to output, uh, and, and we're passed in a, a reference to our complex number. So we use that to, to convert our complex number to a string, then we send that to our output stream, and then since we're returning a reference to an O stream, we just return the resulting out. Um, the, the thing that we're given as, as the first parameter's input gets returned as our out, okay? So the result of all that is I can now, you know, instead of having call to call my toString method, I can just directly send C1 to output streams, okay? And if this is confusing you, you can chain these together, but that's just a special case of doing this, okay? So, so this, um, and as the book says, okay, so to understand how these operators work, 
um, it's as if we had just directly called um, our, our operator like that, okay? So our operator um, returns an output stream. We're not using the return value from this, but we, we give the output stream we, we want to send our output to as the first parameter, and we give the complex number as the second parameter. And since we overloaded the output stream operator, it's going to call our function, okay? So basically, what C++, I mean, it's not actually doing this, but you can think of it behind the, the scenes. Whenever it has an operator like this in a piece of code, it converts it to a function call like this, all right? And it's already defined the basic operator for, for the basic built-in type. So, you know, if I want to do um, add two integer numbers to together, um, um, uh, I, I could do that. Uh, technically, I can't do this. I'll talk about uh, why in a second. But uh, but conceptually, this is what's going on behind the scenes. But in this case, there's a version of, of the operator plus, the binary operator, that takes two integers as input and adds them together. Okay. But, but yeah, that, that won't actually work, but, but this would because we've overloaded our output stream operator, okay? So um, if I did all those functions, I should get uh, like four outputs of, of my C1 value, although I don't have new lines here. So um, I do have a new line here, so let me, let me put a new line into the output stream and a new line there, okay? So if we run that... Um, uh, these are all equivalent to causing C1 to, to be sent to the output stream, to, to, to our um, output operator here. So, so now C1 isn't very interesting, but, but all, all four of these, uh, these lines end up sending the C1, which has the zero and for, for both the real and the imaginary part here. All right. Um, Okay, so that's probably enough uh, about the output. So, you know, I, I find this very useful, though. So once you've added that in there, now I can kind of treat my, my new type of managing language just like uh, built-in types, like integers and floats, like, and just send them to my stream. So I can use those to, to, to display stuff and debug my programs and things. Um, um, all right. The rest of these, right, just the initial. So let, let's move on. So, so let's let's look at binary operators. All right. So um, um, here we, we create. Well, I've created C one, C two, and three with, with different values. Um, and um, now here I'm I'm actually going to be adding C two and C three. So remember, C two and C three are both complex numbers. That they're both uh, this new type we've added to the language. So. If you do this, so once again, this is equivalent to do it. It's equivalent to actually doing this. All right. So, so the operator is uh, the the function name is operator plus, and it's as if I have a member function of my complex number class called operator plus that takes another complex number as its one and only parameter, okay? So C3, this other complex number, will be sent to this, this member function for C2. And what I'm supposed to do uh, is I should add these together and the result, so I should return a new complex number that's the result of adding C2 and C3 together, all right? So that, that's what's happening here. So again, um, uh, just to illustrate this point one more time. Uh, we can do that, right? So, so both of these should give me the same result, all right? And we go ahead and, and, and build it and, and just run to show that these do, in fact, give the same result. Uh, here for adding C2 and C3 together. So 
So there's our addition. So um, C2 uh, was this complex number, C3 was this one. So when you add two complex numbers together, you simply just add the real parts and then the imaginary parts. So we should get uh, 5.3 for the real part when we add them together, and 2.8 plus 4.5 is 6, oh, 2.8 minus 4.5 is negative 1.7. Looks right, so, right? So, and we get the same result for both of these ways of doing it. But, but, you know, this looks more as if C2 and C3 were built-in parts of the language, so. Um, and, um, I mean, you know, if hopefully these, these, these parentheses just are ensuring that, that I don't have an order of precedence problem. I think in this case they're not necessary, so if I just left that in there, uh, just directly like that, it, it should still work as well. So that would just to, to ensure, though, that, um, um, that, that the, the plus operation was done before we sent one of these to the stream or something like that. So this wouldn't compile if, if that uh, if that made a difference. Uh, yeah, so it still runs. So actually, maybe that's actually easier to read since we don't really need those. So. Uh, anyway, so let's look at the uh, implementation of the this binary operator. So this is an example of a binary operator. So a binary operator is an operator that takes values on the left and right hand side of them and, and, do, and does something to combine those two operators, right? So addition, subtraction, uh, multiplication, division are all examples of binary operators among many others. So, so you know, again, uh, operator plus along with minus star and division, so uh, subtraction, multiplication, division are all binary operators. If you want to add a binary operator, overload a binary operator to a class, you, you add a member function called operator plus or minus, or, or, or respectively, right? Uh, and in this, in this case, all of these, they take um, a, another, some other complex number on the right-hand side. So I, I usually use right-hand side, or another common convention is to just call this other. So that's the other one that we're trying to add to this. Uh, so, the, and, and then if you, let's, let me look at operator plus. So, um, so here is, is and maybe I won't look at the other binary operators like plus, minus multiplication because they're all pretty similar. So, um, uh, so what we want to do is we want to add this um, complex number to the, the right-hand side, so to, to this other complex number that was on the right-hand side of the addition. So the way to do that is you take the real part of this plus the real part of the right-hand side, add those together, that's your new resulting real part, and the, you take the imaginary part of this object plus the imaginary part of the right-hand side, that's your new resulting imaginary part, and so what we do, so we're supposed to create, we're supposed to create and return a new complex number as a result of doing this. So this actually works, um, I can create just, just a new complex number result, and then I, I use my constructor for a complex number. So I, I give the, the new real part and the new imaginary part for my new resulting complex number. That results in a new complex number called result, and I return that as the result. Okay, so that's the same pattern that we use for subtraction. You just subtract the two parts and um, multiplication, the, 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 what the real and the imaginary part for multiplication is more complex, but uh, we, we calculate what the real part, should, the new real part should be and what the new imaginary part should be, and then we create a new complex number and return that for multiplication, all right? And I'll come to division in a second. Um, uh, so that that's our that's you know basic examples of binary operators. So um, so we saw addition. Um, you know, so so you know we can we can subtract um, numbers. We can multiply them together. Uh, we move that up here. So we have those three that I've talked about so far. Um, okay, let's build. run those. 
So if you check those out, hopefully, hopefully it was working. I mean, you know, I, I haven't actually really uh, extensively debugged, but but you can see that C2, C two C that that adding them together, you get a new result um, when we display those out. Subtracting them, you get a new result. So that's a result from subtracting them, multiplying them together, we get this new result. Okay, so. Um, let me um, so, uh, yeah. So, so let me let me go ahead and look at the assignment operator next here. So uh, in, instead of doing the, I mean, you can do these just as an expression, like I did here um, when when I when I did like my multiplication and addition and subtraction and just sent the re the result to a stream. But but maybe you know more common, I might want to do an operation and save that result in a new. Um, uh, in, in a new resulting complex number, okay? So typically you would do something like this or something like this, okay? So C4, and I initialize it to be the value of C2 uh, minus C3, okay? The, the result of the subtraction, okay? Um, let me just go down to this one here. In, in C5, I do basically the same calculation. I do C5 equals C2 times C3. I just don't initialize it at the same time I declare my number, okay? Um, So, oh, uh, and let me step over one more time here to show the result of that. So, you can see both C4 and C5 have the same result because we're doing the same operation, subtracting C2 minus C3 for, for C4. So, so, so let's look at that and, and note that here, let me, let me do this one first. So we output C5. C5 was a new complex number. We assigned it C2 minus three, C3, and then we output it to our output stream, right? So, um... The, the reason why this works is because we define, um, uh, we overrode the equal operator. So equal is, a, is another operator, a binary operator, just like plus and minus and star. You know, it takes a complex number on the right-hand side, and we want to assign that complex number on the left-hand side. So remember, when we do this expression, C2 minus C3, the result, it, it does this calculation, and the result is a new complex number that we return from doing the subtraction. Uh, and then we end up calling the operator equals to, to assign that, that resulting value into C5, all right? So this is known as the assignment operator, so you can overload that. Uh, the, notice that the, um, um, the, the definition is a little bit different. So um, we say that we want a reference to a complex number on the right-hand side. Um, a constant reference. So, so all these constants mean that we guarantee that we won't change the right-hand side as a result of calling this member function. So whatever the value was before we came in will be still be the same as after we call it. Um, and then we're returning a reference uh, uh, on the left-hand side, okay? Um, so um, so let's look at the assignment operator here. So there it is. So this is typical, and, and our textbook kind of said this. So normally what you should do when you're implementing uh, assignment operator is uh, you shouldn't do self-assignment, okay? So um, if this in the right-hand side, so, so this is going to be a reference. It's going to be a pointer. And if that's equal to the, 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 the right-hand side that's passed in, so if it's equal, we'll skip over this. We won't do anything. That, that means that it's actually you're trying to assign an item to itself. But if they're not equal, we want to do whatever we need to do to copy the, the other object, the right-hand side, into the new object, okay? Now, technically, um, I didn't need to override the assignment operator because the, the, the C++, um, the, the default assignment operator for new classes uh, or new uh, structures that you add to the um, language is to do exactly this. So all of the member variables of your structure or class will be copied to the new one for the assignment operator, okay? So I'm just doing what, what C++ would do for me um, um, uh, anyway. So, so technically I, wouldn't, I didn't need to override this assignment operator. Um, it, it, it actually does this uh, by default in the C++ language, okay? So, um, so even though I don't need to do it here, I mean, overloading your assignment operator can be useful. So for some classes that you create, you need to do more than just copy over all your member variables. 
So the, the typical example is if I have an array uh, of items inside of a class, if I just copy over the, the, the base address of the array, my, my left-hand side, my new, um, my, my new class or my new data type will have the, the same, will be pointing to the same base address, but that can be problematic. So, so in that case, uh, it's not an actual copy. They're both referencing the, the same array. And if I change the, the value in one of those after I make an assignment, it will affect or change the other one. That's often not what you want to do. So, so uh, the, the more common thing for overloading the equals operator um, is, is if you have something that needs what's known as a deep copy inside of here, I will make a new version of it and then actually copy over all the items. So, so typically if I have arrays inside of my, um, my new data type is, is, is when you have to overload your assignment operator. Okay? So anyway, back to this. You notice that um, it's, it is outputting that log message. So, so we get that, that uh, because, um, uh, because it, ends the, it, it, it enters the assignment operator here. So, uh, but if I can go back to my main, um, we didn't get... Um, we didn't get a message here when we did the assignment at the same time that we declared D4. Uh, C4, right? So C4 here, um, you know, we, we output that, um, we output this line that we were performing the assignment, then we, we declare a variable C4, and at the same time we assigned it a new value, the result of subtracting C, C3 from C2, uh, and then we displayed C4 here, so we got that, but, but notice we didn't get that log message, okay? So basically that's because, um, um, if you do an, ex an assignment like this, uh, it's going to call your assignment operator, or it'll use the built-in uh, notion of assignment for a structure or a class. But if you do an assignment statement during the declaration, it's actually going to call the um, what's known as the, um, uh, the, the the assignment constructor, okay, or uh, um, actually the um, Yeah, the, the, the assignment uh, constructor in this case, right? So it's as if I had done this uh, instead. I'm oh, sorry, not the assignment constructor, the copy constructor, okay? Um, or, or to simplify this further, it's as if I had done this. Um, uh, although I'm, I'm doing it... Uh, so, so the, the copy constructor, though, if, if I pass in another complex number, if I, if I pass in another object of the same type, then I'm creating a new instance of the object. Uh, so in this case, I'm creating a new instance called C4 of complex number, and I'm passing in another complex number uh, to the constructor. So, so that's a, a copy constructor. So uh, if, you, if you define your copy constructor, you can override your co copy constructor. I didn't do that for this class. Uh, but but that's different from the assignment uh, operator, overloading your assignment operator. But uh, again, for C++, the, the default behavior for the, the, the copy constructor is the same as the default behavior for the assignment operator for a new class. So what it does is it just um, copies over all of the um, member variables uh, for, for the new object that you're creating. Okay. So that, that's why you don't see that message. So it's not actually using the assignment operator, it's using the copy constructor. In this case, since I didn't override the copy constructor, it uses the default one, which works uh, in, in this case for my complex number type. So, um, but let me change that back. Um, and we'll rerun here. So that that was um, that that was the assignment operator. Um, so let's get back to looking at um, some kind of arithmetic operators. So um, there is actually a division operator that, that I've defined uh, for the complex number as well. But the easiest way to define uh, the division for complex numbers 
is to define it in terms of the multiplication of the number times the reciprocal, okay? So, um, so for division, so if W and Z are two complex numbers, uh, it's actually easier to just, instead of doing W divided by Z, to say W, to, to keep using multiplication, but to have the reciprocal of a complex number, 1 divided by Z, okay? So that's, that's what the reciprocal is. So if you multiply the, the number times the reciprocal, you get, it's the same as doing division, all right? I mean, that's the same for, you know, just regular floating point numbers, but, but it turns out to be easier to implement division this way for complex numbers. Uh, but but this is uh, you can think of this as a unary operator. So if I want to define the reciprocal of a complex number, um, I, I can just um, um, uh, define that. So we can first start by defining a again a you know just a regular member function reciprocal. So the result of, of doing the reciprocal on a number in this case, I don't want to change my actual complex number. I want to again I want to recreate create a new complex number and return that as the result of calculating the reciprocal of this complex number, okay? So uh, this member function called reciprocal does this calculation. So this is, this is how you actually calculate the new real part and the new imaginary part if I want to do the reciprocal of, of a complex number z that, that is the, the x is the real part and y is the imaginary part, all right? Um, so, but, but again, like our like our pattern before, um, we, we we calculate the result the resulting new real part here in a variable we call real result, and the resulting new imaginary part uh, here, um, and then we create a new complex number and return that as the result of calling reciprocal. Okay, so um, if I can jump back down to main real quickly. And uh, step up. so so we could just directly use that that member function for a complex number to, to calculate our reciprocal. So I won't prove that that's right. I mean it might be buggy. I actually haven't really looked at it too closely. But 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 uh, if my calculation is, calculation is right, uh, I'm claiming that the reciprocal, so one over C two, uh, of this complex number C two is this value, 0.17 minus 0.13 i. Okay. Um, now, we can define, uh, so, so in this case, this is a unary operator uh, on C2. We just, we just want to define the reciprocal, okay, and apply that, all right? So there's no operator in C++ that really means reciprocal, so I'm just kind of using tilde. So tilde actually in the, the, the base C language means the, uh, uh, it's, it's binary not, okay? So if you're actually doing binary arithmetic, you can use tilde to do a binary uh, not of a binary number. Um, so this is, I mean, you know, it's, it's, off, it's not a good idea to change the meaning of operators. So that just, if you're not, you know, if you know what tilde means, this is going to be confusing. If, if I just look at this code, it's going to look like I'm, I'm treating C2 as a binary number and taking the, the, the binary not of it, okay? Uh, but, um, but this is for example purposes. So I'm going to... Oh, overload the tilde to, as, as a unary operator. Sorry, I've been saying binary. So, so, so we're, we're, this is an example of a unary operator here. We're going to overload it to, to mean the reciprocal for my complex number here. All right? So um, it looks something like this. Um, so in this case, there's no right-hand side. So for a unary operator, so if you've read our textbook, you know, the more common unary operators are like plus plus to increment, minus minus to decrement. So in that case, you're just doing the operation on the object itself. There, there's no other object like in a binary operator that you're combining together. So, 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 so there's nothing we're passing in on the right-hand side. We're just doing the reciprocal on ourself here. And in this case, again, I'm just going to reuse my reciprocal method instead of uh, redefining it. So you should, should always um, don't. You should never repeat yourself. The dry principle: don't repeat yourself. Okay. Um, so since I um, so 
since I sorry since I already had the reciprocal member function to do the actual work, if you look at overrode overriding the uh, the the tilde operator to mean reciprocal for complex numbers, all we do is call that member function again. So we just return the result of whatever recip reciprocal um, does, right? And then if you look at division, um, so it, it, it looks different from addition, multiplication, and division because we, we uh, reuse the definition of reciprocal. So it, we define division as just simply the multiplication uh, of, of this on the left-hand side times the reciprocal of whatever item is passed in on the right hand side. And get notice, you know, so I'm I'm you know, I'm, I'm over I'm using the overloading of star. It even works inside of a member function. So so the, the left hand side is a complex number, a reference to a complex number. The right hand side is a is a is a reference to a complex number. Um, and this multiplies those together. So um all right, so, so that's our um, uh, example of a unary operator. So I could step over that. We should get the same result for both for both directly calling reciprocal or applying the unary tilde, which I've defined to mean reciprocal. So, so yeah, I mean, at least we are getting the same result for that. Uh, and then we can use that to to, to define division, division, like like we showed you. So our division operator is using the reciprocal. Um, to calculate C3 divided by C2 to get a resulting division here. Um, okay, so um, as I showed in the slide here, I wanted to show an example then of overloading the um, indexing operator. So you can, oh, the, the operator like to index into an array is an operator just like addition and subtraction in C and C++. Uh, I specifically want to show this one because we're, we're probably going to be using this on our assignment for the overloading, for operator overloading uh, this week. Um, so again, this, this might not be something that I would actually want to do, but I can overload the operator, uh, the indexing operator, uh, and in this case, I'm going to define it. So if I, if I want to index 1, we're defining that to be the real part of, of the complex number. And if I ask for index 2, that's the imaginary part. And I don't define what it means if I give some other index. So I think we just return 0 if I give uh, an index greater than 2 or less than 1 so in this case. Um, so let's look at that operator. So, so again, you know, this is just a, uh, another operator. So in this case, the, the parameter that we pass in is not another complex number, but it's just an integer value. It's the index that you want to um, index into your, your um, function, or sorry, into your um, abstract data type, right? So 0, 1, 2, your integer index. And then the result, again, we're, we're returning, in this case, we're returning the real or the imaginary part. So the real and the imaginary part is a double. So we're going to actually return a reference. So th this is kind of important for the, uh, the, the indexing operator. You usually return a reference to the item, the ampersand here. And I'll show why in a second here. But um, let's just look at the implementation of that. So here, simply... Um, uh, we, we take the input value, the index, and if it's 1, we just return the real part uh, directly. If it's 2, we return the imaginary part. Since we're returning a double reference, it actually returns a reference. Remember, so a reference is an address. So it's as if we're handing it the actual address of the real part or the imaginary part of my of this complex number, okay? And yeah, I, th this is actually a bad thing to do. I'm, I'm returning... Um, a reference to a local variable here, um, and you should probably get a warning message uh, if you do that. If not outright, your compiler will refuse to do this. Um, but, but yeah, it returns zero. Actually, a reference to this value variable, which I set to zero here. After this function returns, this value variable gets popped off my stack, so it's not actually... Uh, it's not actually... Um, um, a valid reference anymore when we return from this function, so this is kind of a dangerous thing to do. But um, anyway, but I'm not really using that. So.
So if we look at C5 here, it has the value 1.7 plus 7.3i. So if we get index 1, we should get the real part, which is 1.7. And if we, if we use index 2, it should return the, the imaginary part. Um, and as I said, um, the reason why for the indexing operation you usually return a reference is because if you return a reference, you can actually use that on the, the left-hand side for an, for an assignment. So, so by doing that, I've, 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 I've not only defined a, a getter method to get the real and the imaginary part, but I can use that as a setter method, as, as, as my setter for the real and imaginary part as well. Because since this returns a, a memory reference, as if it's a pointer, if I assign a value into that, it's actually going to change the, the real part uh, for C5, if I, if I assign it to index 1. And if I assign this to index 2, it'll, it'll change the imaginary part. So now if we, if we do that assignment and we step over, the result is that C5 now has the value 42.42 minus 1.234i uh, um, as the real and the imaginary parts um, for our um, uh, number, okay? So, uh, I mean, those were just quickly uh, some uh, examples of, of overloading binary operators, overloading unary operators, uh, overloading the, um, the assignment operator, um, and, and we, we overload the stream operator. Um, let me, let me, and then I'm going to quickly, as, as a final thing here, kind of to set us up for the, uh, the, the video on templates, uh, talk quickly about function overloading. So, uh, our textbook, uh, if you're in my class for these videos, talked about function overloading all the way back in the chapter when we talked about functions, okay? I didn't really mention it at that point, uh, but um, function overloading is, is a, is a built-in part of the C language, um, uh, at least uh, uh, for a while anyway. Um, it might have been added when C++ was developed to the language, but, but it is a basic part of the C language. Uh, so you can do things like this. So I can define a function like double called minimum. So the name is minimum that just takes two doubles as input. In this case, it's going to return the smaller of the two. All right. So we can call our double function um, like here. Now I'm, I'm, repa I'm passing in two double constants, 3.5 and 8.7. But it, the, in this case, it will call my minimum. So the way function overloading works is it, it matches your parameters that you pass in with your with your function signature. So since I define a function that takes two doubles as um, as as the parameter one, the parameter two, it will end up invoking that function uh, in in this in my first uh, line uh, here in main. Okay. So the result should be three point five. That's the smaller of the two. Right. But if I call minimum with C5 and C3, which are complex numbers, uh, and I define a function that takes two complex numbers, that's perfectly fine. So that we're overloading the minimum function within this file here. Now, my second version of minimum takes complex numbers as, as my two parameters and returns a complex number as the result. Okay? And it does something similar to, to what we did for minimum, but it checks the... Um, uh, we're, we're using the overloading of the indexing operator here, but, but it checks the real part. Um, if that's smaller, then the, then the left is the smaller one of the two. And if that's bigger, then the right is the, the smaller one of the two. If those are equal, then we, we, we fall back to the imaginary part to figure out which is the smaller of the two numbers. So, um, and, you know, it works. So minimum is overloaded. So in this case, um, it, it's going to call that second version of the function uh, since I pass, since my signature is I'm passing in two complex numbers, okay? Um, and um, so two important points about this. I mean, again, back to overloading operators. I mean, that's really what's happening for the operators that you overload as well. So you can think of it as if C++ provides operators for like regular arithmetic, you know, to, to, to add together integers or doubles and things like that. And I'm just adding another operator with, with a different signature uh, to the language so I can overload, you know, uh, give a definition for you how you add together complex numbers.
okay? That's what operator overloading is. And, and the same for like the assignment operator for equals and, and all the others that we looked at, right? Um, and the other thing though is that, uh, you know, if I really needed a minimum function, gee, wouldn't it be nice, I mean, if I had a general one. So instead of having to write one for uh, comparing integers and comparing strings and comparing all the different types that I might want to have the minimum of, is there some way I could write one minimum function once and for all, okay? And that's really what templates are about, but that will be our next video. All right, so to summarize, uh, we, we, we talked about both operator overloading and function overloading. Um, as I just talked about here at the end, operator overloading is really just function overloading. We're overloading these operator functions, um, operator plus, operator minus, um, operator less than, less than for the output operator, and so on, okay? Some operators are unary, so they don't take a right-hand side. Some operators are binary, so um, um, you know, so I have a value on the left and right hand side for like addition. Some operators are both, so so there's an operator minus for binary, for, uh, which normally means subtraction, and there's operator minus for negation, which means taking the negative of of a number, like a double or an integer, and so on. And we didn't talk a lot about. There's lots of other operators, you know. So all the Boolean operators, most of those are are binary. So if I want to compare if two numbers are equal, that would have been a useful operator for my complex number class. Instead of my minimum function, I compared it by hand, but I could have compared like an, uh, an equals or a less than or, or greater than operator and just use those directly. So, um, Okay, so that's it. Um, um, and uh, we will stop our video there. Hopefully that was helpful, cleared up kind of what overloading is all about in C++.